Hello everybody and welcome to our Leaving Cert series of thermochemistry. Today we are going to be looking at heat of combustion, heat of formation and bond energy. Let's begin with the heat of combustion and let's define heat of combustion. So the heat of combustion is the heat change in kilojoules when one mole, and one mole is important, when one mole of a substance is completely burned in excess oxygen. Let's have a look at the example here below. So here I have hydrogen plus a half O2 oxygen goes on to produce water, H2O. And the enthalpy change, delta H for that reaction, is minus 242 kilojoules per mole. If we have a look at the second reaction underneath, which is very similar to the first one, that's a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen and producing water. In this case, I have two moles of hydrogen plus one mole of oxygen going on to produce two moles of water, H2O. In this case, the delta H, or the enthalpy change, is minus 484 kilojoules per mole. Please note that this second reaction is not a heat of combustion. In order for it to be a heat of combustion, there must be one mole of the substance burned in excess oxygen. Whereas in the second example, two moles of hydrogen are burned in excess oxygen. So the first value, where delta H is equal to minus 242 kilojoules per mole, that is the heat of combustion for that reaction, and not the second one. So experimentally, how do we measure the heats of combustion? Well, we would do that by using a bomb calorimeter. And I'm going to introduce you to the different components used in such an experiment. So just to show you, here is the actual bomb calorimeter itself. Inside that bomb calorimeter, you have a sample cup where you would put your sample. The bomb calorimeter inside is made up of air and also ignition wires pass down into the bomb calorimeter and into your sample cup. Outside of the bomb calorimeter is water, which is contained in a special insulated container. A thermometer is inserted into the water and there's also a stirring rod to make sure the heat is homogeneously mixed within the water sample. Now let's have a look at how we would conduct that experiment. Having seen how the apparatus is set up, this is how the experiment would be conducted. So you take your calorimeter and you would place a known amount of sample in the sample tray, or also known as the crucible, Let's say, for example, we put in three grams of ethanol. The calorimeter is then going to be pressurized with oxygen or air, and then it will be sealed. Your calorimeter is then placed in the bath of water, which is a known quantity and is in an insulated container. The sample in the bomb is going to be ignited via the electrical wires. Once the sample is ignited, it will completely combust and the heat from the reaction will be absorbed in two ways. One, by the calorimeter itself, and secondly, by the water. So during the reaction, the water is constantly stirred to ensure the temperature is homogeneous throughout. And the thermometer is going to measure the change in temperature of the water. The data is going to be collected and calculated then for our heat of combustion. In previous lectures, I've spoken before about the kilogram calorific value, but I want to bring your attention to it here. For the simple reason, it's very, very similar to the heats of combustion. Remember the definition for the calorific value is the heat given out when one kilogram of a substance is burned in excess oxygen. The one for heat of combustion is a mole. So we're looking at the difference between a mole of a substance and one kilogram of a substance. 
So the definitions are very similar. Be careful you don't mix them up. So where is one used? Well, heats of combustion is often used by chemists, whereas the kilogram calorific value is more typically used by engineers. Let's move on to heat of formation. The heat of formation is the heat change in kilojoules which occurs when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard state. So there's quite a lot of information in this definition. First of all, the one mole of a compound formed and elements in their standard state. Let's have a look at an example. Here I have ethane. The chemical formula for ethane is C2H6. So I'm looking to form one mole of ethane. So one mole of C2H6 from its elements. Well, what elements are present here? The elements carbon and the elements hydrogen. Carbon in its standard state. Standard state is typically room temperature, which is 298 Kelvin, and one atmosphere, which is usually the pressure at sea level. So at that state, carbon is usually found as a solid, and hydrogen is usually found as a gas. Ethane is also usually found at a gas under the standard states. So it's the elements that form the compound, and that's the heat of formation. I think it's important that we mention bond energy at this stage. So far, all the reactions we've been looking at, we're seeing bonds breaking and new bonds being formed. So what is bond energy? It is the average energy in kilojoules required to break one mole of bonds of the same type and to separate the atoms completely, forming neutral gaseous atoms. So what we're saying here is energy is needed or required to break bonds. Energy is released when bonds are formed. Here's a worked example for you. I have CH4. This is methane. And I can see it is broken down into carbon and four hydrogens. The change in enthalpy, the change in heat is plus, which is a positive, usually means energy is absorbed, 1664 kilojoules per mole. So to find the average bond energy, I would simply divide this figure by 4. Because if I have a look at methane, it's CH4. So there are four carbon-hydrogen bonds. So the average energy to break these bonds will be 416 kilojoules per mole. So please note this energy is average. If you were to look at the individual energies, for example, to break the first bond, the first CH bond in methane would be of higher energy than, say, the last bond that would be broken. So the energy is different. They're not exact, and that's why we say an average bond energy. Here's a question that may be posed. Is bond breaking endothermic or exothermic? So if I go up and have a look and see, I have a positive value here. That means heat is being taken into the system. Therefore, it's endothermic. Energy is required to break bonds. Is bond making or bond formation endo or exothermic? Remember, the answer is exothermic. Energy is released when bonds are broken. Have a go at this one yourself. Pause the video and see who, how you get on. In the reaction here, I have methane plus oxygen going on to produce carbon dioxide and water. The delta H, or the change in enthalpy for that reaction, is minus 484 kilojoules per mole. So using your knowledge of bond energy, explain why the overall reaction is exothermic. 
To answer this question, we have to ask ourselves, what do we know about bond energy? We know that when bonds are broken, energy is absorbed. And when bonds are made, energy is given out. So, the methane, CH4, these bonds will have to be broken. In the oxygen, these bonds will also have to be broken. New bonds are made for the carbon dioxide and the water. Let's have a look at the change in enthalpy, the change of heat at a constant pressure. And the overall change is minus 484 kilojoules per mole. What does the negative symbol mean? Is the reaction endothermic or is it exothermic? The reaction is exothermic and I know this because of the negative sign. Exothermic means heat is given out. So we know that energy is absorbed when bonds are being broken and energy is given out when new bonds are formed. The overall change we notice is more energy is given out than was taken in. That's what this indicates here, the change that occurred in the heats compared to the heat taken in versus the heat given out. The fact that it's exothermic means there was more heat released than there was absorbed. So now that we have an understanding of the heats of combustion, heats of formation, and bond energy, in the next presentation, I'm going to look at the law of Hess. So thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time.